Mr. Feller? Thank you, sir. A few topics today, Robert. On BP, yes. we told the administration to ask BP to stop work on the temporary cap because some scientific questions needed to be answered. Yep. Um, does this suggest that there are, in fact, serious questions about the viability of the cap? Well, let me give a broad answer here and walk through some of uh, what you discussed, Ben. As I think you all <coughs> know uh, from Thad Allen's briefing, I believe, yesterday, we, uh, we want to figure out the structural integrity uh, of the well bore. Uh, and why that's important is a whole host of reasons, um, but particularly uh, we want to judge the integrity uh, for the use of that, uh, the, the blowout preventer on the well either for a capping procedure now or an assistance in the capping procedure with the relief well. And let me explain why that's important. So the ceiling cap, and I, I should stress here that this is not related to the containment architecture. And what I mean by that is we, we, we believe that the cap will work just fine in the containment. That through a couple of different areas, that, um, that cap will take oil to the surface as well as through the choke and kill lines. The helix producer that we've talked about become, uh, coming online has increased and ramped up its production. And we think in the next day or so, uh, we'll, we will easily see a containment capability that exceeds any of the previous days as we get to 60 to 80,000. Now why the pressure tests are important and why the well bore integrity is important. When you close the vents and you increase the pressure, if the structural integrity of the well bore uh, isn't strong, what you'll get is oil coming out of, let's say there was a rupture in a disc. You'll get oil coming out into the strata, which could lead to oil leaking from not the blowout preventer where it is now and what is being capped with the seal, but you, this could come out from multiple points on the sea floor. Uh, obviously, that uh, would complicate, uh, be a very complicated situation to deal with because, again, you could, have, you could have oil coming from a lot of different or several different places that don't have blowout preventers on top of them, right? So we want to conduct structural testing in order to make sure uh, that the well is, is safe and secure. Before that testing begins, Secretary Chu, other government scientists, and scientists in academia have asked a series of questions to ensure, out of an abundance of caution, that the steps we're taking uh, and that BP will take during the pressurization tests uh, are done so that the integrity of the blowout preventer and the integrity of the well are preserved. In other words, this is a first do no harm uh, to the well. This has happened at, in many different occasions throughout this process in the past 86 days when scientists have asked BP um, additional questions and insisted on information and calculations and that scenarios be run through before some uh, movement happens in order to make sure that, that we, we're not in a, in a time in which we're increasing our containment capacity, not doing any damage to the well. So I, I, the scientists uh, are in a meeting with BP as we speak um, and uh, going through BP's answers to these questions. And we'll have a sense probably in a, the not too distant future, probably in the next few hours, what the next steps are. I, I do not, again, consider this to be um, some giant setback. I do believe it is, it is, it's a series of steps that, and questions that we've asked and that are being taken in order to ensure that what we're doing is being done out of an abundance of caution uh, to do no harm. Do you have a sense right now of when people will have the information they need to continue yeah. the work? Well, the meeting that, uh, the meeting they're in started at one o'clock. Um, so I anticipate we will have some preliminary judgment uh, and information, they're getting that right now and, and may have something in the next couple of hours that may lead to uh, the next steps in terms of that pressurization testing. This does not, though, have to do with um, uh, 
uh, th this is not connected to the relief well. When is work on that going to continue? Uh, well, I, I think BP mentioned that they had paused, uh, I think, on some of the scoping on this. I don't, uh, I, I don't have any information on that, but I, that, that was not something that uh, we were involved in. And I, uh, I, this has, again, happened at many points throughout this process. So this is different from that. And the, again, the containment architecture that will lead us to a containment capacity of 60 to 80,000 barrels is, uh, is, uh, is not in jeopardy. Two other quick topics, please. On politics, the, the Speaker of the House apparently didn't think you were stating the obvious when you talked about there being enough seats in play for Republicans to potentially win control. Uh, and she had um, several reports, including her own, that she's lashed out at, uh, at you for those comments. What is your reaction to that? Does it matter to you? Well, look, uh, I, uh, of course, the opinion of the Speaker of the House matters to me and matters to uh, uh, Democrats in Washington and throughout this country. Look, let's, let's be clear that uh, the work that the House and the Speaker have done over the past 18 months uh, in making tough choices and making tough votes and in passing the agenda of this president have, uh, uh, have been monumental. Um, I have not spoken with the speaker. Um, uh, I, uh, Would you like to? Uh, if there's an occasion to speak, of course. Uh, but I don't have a whole lot to add to what I've said the last couple of days on this, Ben, except to say that, um, as I said on Sunday, in three and a half months or so, we're going to have an election that will be based on a very clear choice. Um, the House leadership will be down here today to talk about the upcoming agenda uh, for the next several weeks, un extending unemployment insurance. Um, uh, the House has already obviously passed financial reform. They passed an extension of unemployment insurance as well. Uh, we'll talk about uh, funding for the supplemental. Uh, there are a whole host of issues that will be worked on in the next couple weeks that will highlight the choices that voters will have. Uh, and I think, uh, I think in that choice, we are going to do very well. And as I have said uh, throughout this, uh, I think we will retain the House and the Senate. In one report, she was paraphrased as saying of you, I don't know who this guy is. I've never met him before. That's literally true, right? Uh, we have met before. How would you, <laughs> how would you describe your, your relationship with the speaker? Cordial. I mean, I, I don't. I, I have not seen that report, but uh, uh, so I, I don't. I don't. I haven't seen that. I don't know. One other quick topic, please, on this um, controversy involving the Iroquois uh, lacrosse team. This, the report today: the State Department has dropped its demand that the team get uh, new uh, higher security U.S. passports, and that allows them to travel. Do you know why the the change of position? No, but I can. Uh, let me get some information uh, uh, for you uh, from the State Department on that. Yes, ma'am. Um, a couple of topics as well. On the economy, why is the administration turning to Bill Clinton um, with the meeting today? Is it a reflection of the fact that he's seen as having better relations with business and more moderate no, economic no, I, policies? The, one of the ideas that uh, the president is here to discuss uh, with, uh, former president's here to discuss with President Obama and uh, clean energy CEOs. Uh, is a Clinton Global Initiative uh, effort at um, retrofitting large buildings, um, making them energy efficient, training um, uh, training workers in uh, gaining the skills needed to uh, retrofit and weatherize buildings. A project that is uh, going on at a, the Empire State Building now is an example of that. Uh, that uh, that creates jobs and creates training um, for uh, for those that are involved. This is a, an idea that he has uh, he has worked on through the Clinton Global Initiative that uh, he's spoken with the economic team about and will speak with uh, with the president about. It, it, so it doesn't have anything to do with the Buffett meeting, the Chamber of Commerce. No, and uh, the CEA uh, Warren Buffett was here earlier today. Uh, he. Uh, uh, <laughs> He and the president spoke about uh, the economy in uh, uh, a fairly lengthy meeting. Um, the efforts that we're uh, taking to uh, to get the economy uh, continue to get the economy moving again. Uh, he wanted to come in and see the president, and 
uh, you don't turn down the, the opportunity to talk to Warren Buffett. So the timing's really just coincidental. A bunch of things have all happened at once. It seems like it's a very big jobs day. Well, we, we have been working on this agenda for uh, uh, each and every day of this administration. And the question about BP is earlier today, the White House Natural, Natural Resources Committee voted to block BP from getting future offshore oil drilling leases. Um, we wondered. The, the, the White the House Natural no, Resources Committee? No, that's why I. The, 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 okay. the House the, Natural Resources Committee. Previously, a committee I was unaware of. <laughs> The Why House Natural about? Resources Committee did anyway, what? Anyway, the House voted, as you know. Um, it, does the administration support that position, and do you think that it could stop? I will stop be honest with you. I have not. Uh, the money it needs to clean up. Uh, I have. I have not seen what uh, what the committee did. I, I'll be happy to go back and see if there's reaction to that. Um, again, uh, as, as we have said on numerous occasions, including the president, that um, we have. Uh, we worked out an agreement with uh, with BP to establish a twenty billion dollar escrow fund to pay the claims that they're responsible for. Um, we believe that uh, uh, that is uh, something that they are uh, very able to do and will be able to do in the future. Uh, so we do not have uh, concerns. Again, I'll check on this. We don't have concerns about uh, about their uh, overall economic. Health. Okay, and then one last thing, the Iranian scientist, mm -hmm. um, a U.S. official came out and said that the U.S. got useful information from Sharam Amiri. Um, you know, wouldn't saying something like that expose him to retaliation from the Iranians? It seems uh, I'm, I'm not going to add to the legend. Yes. Um, there have been uh, complaints from independent marine researchers that NOAA is forwarding information as it relates to uh, the Gulf, the spill in the Gulf, and that uh, if, if what, hoarding what types of just data uh, about how bad the spill is, uh, the environmental damage, any other data that uh, NOAA I'm happy has. to look at some of these because I, I've not. Uh, NOAA has been actively involved in um, uh, subsea testing. Um, they are obviously have been heavily involved in monitoring the movement of the oil. They monitor, uh, they have monitored uh, currents like the loop current. Um, they are uh, very actively involved in uh, in our response effort. And I, I, I have not seen that type of information. On a theoretical level, shouldn't they be sharing that information with the public and with independent researchers, or is it proprietary and only belongs to them? I, I don't, uh, again, I'm happy to look at what uh, what people think that is not being shared that, that should be. Again, I, I, uh, Dr. Lubchenko and, and others at NOAA have, again, been very actively involved in this. They're part of and have been an active part of things right. like the flow rate group. I, I don't, uh, uh, again, I'm previously unaware that uh, uh, there was concern by some that they weren't getting information. Well, just, uh, I, I, okay, so I understand you're not familiar with the, these details, but on a theoretical level, shouldn't organizations like NOAA share as much data as they can with the public and with and with I'm not other trying to be obstinate, Jake. I just don't. I don't. Uh, I'm happy to look at complaints that that's not happening. I'm, okay. I'm not under the impression that uh, that NOAA is hoarding data. Do you have any response to the the complaint uh, from the Chamber of Commerce today? Here's just one excerpt of uh, Tom Donahue said, taken collectively. The regulatory activity now underway is so overwhelming and beyond anything we've ever seen that we risk moving this country away from a government of the people to a government of regulators. You know, um, I think it is ironic to make a statement like that as companies report, uh, as Intel did today, uh, record sales um, when uh, corporate profits are up 65 percent from where they were two years ago. Um, Look, the Chamber of Commerce has uh, a different approach to certain issues, um, but we have different responsibilities. Uh, the President, uh, we have not in any way instituted a regulatory uh, structure that is in danger of doing anything like that. Um, uh, again, I, many of the things that they talked about in their letter that they sent were 
how do you have tax cuts for economic growth? 25 uh, different tax cuts were contained in the Recovery Act. The notion that they would like to see uh, increased investment in infrastructure uh, is something that the president has talked about for uh, years. Um, so I'm, uh, I, I don't uh, I, I don't think that what I don't think what they're saying in that letter squares uh, very well with what's going on in uh, in the business world in this country right now. Is business investment based on the fragility of the economy, uh, is it governed by that? Of course. Um, but I don't think that that is, uh, I, it's certainly not a surprising thing. Last question is uh, some Republicans in Congress are complaining uh, about the Recovery Act signs. They're saying that that's a waste of millions of dollars uh, and, and should be better spent. Um, does the White House have better any spent on recovery budget? Uh, however you want to better spend it, uh, I suppose. But they're saying it's wasteful, that all yeah, this all I, this. I, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, look, uh, I'm glad that Republicans have noticed the uh, several, uh, the nearly 11,000 road projects that are underway this summer. Um, we have encouraged and uh, states to let people know how their tax money is being spent. Um, some post signs, some don't. Um, I believe uh, that as a matter of spending, uh, those signs account for about three cents out of every $100 uh, that is spent on the recovery. Dan? Yeah, just to clarify, so it was Warren Buffett who initiated the meeting. He called the White House. And the, the, he and the president have talked uh, regularly. I think somebody brought up in a meeting uh, within the past week that uh, he wanted to come in and. Uh, the president said he'd love to have uh, Warren in to talk about the economy. And he wanted to offer advice or well, guidance? Well, they, uh, they talk about a whole range of things. Okay. Um, yesterday when the, we, we learned that the decision to uh, postpone that integrity test took place at 4.30, but that wasn't made public until some five hours later, what, why the delay in that information getting out? Uh, I don't know what time the statement went out from the from the, from the jet. Later. <clears throat> yeah. I, uh, I don't know why that statement went out five hours later. Uh, again, the, 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 Dan, the process that is gone through on many of these steps is, and Secretary Chu and uh, Dr. McNutt and others have spent uh, days and days and days in Houston, uh, particularly around uh, big events such as uh, this one with the ceiling cap and the helix producer coming online. Um, and. Uh, and, and we simply asked uh, BP a series of questions that we felt comfortable wanting to know the answers to prior to uh, Admiral Allen and the Federal Launching Coordinator signing off on uh, these pressurization tests. I think what's important is, again, we get this right. This is the 86th day. Uh, the containment architecture that we have in place is greater than at any point uh, in this disaster. Uh, and we are... Um, our attitude is that we should be doing this in a way that's cautious uh, and not risky. Now, getting that information out, that would have been uh, Thad Allen who should have done that? I, I believe the statement came out from the Joint, uh, the, the joint Information But in uh, terms center. of making a call as to when this information should have gotten out there, that would be up to Thad Allen? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm sure somebody who works for Thad Allen. Um, in, in, ge in general, is the administration still pleased with the level of transparency and, and the way that the details of what's going on is being communicated publicly? Well, again, look, we don't, uh, BP speaks for BP, right? We speak for, um, uh, obviously, Admiral Allen, uh, Secretary Chu, Carol Browner, and others uh, direct BP to do what we think is scientific and necessary uh, in order to make the right decisions and order the right things be done uh, at, that, uh, at that structure. Uh, that's what we're doing in this case, is to ensure that um, we're making these decisions based on science uh, and that we're doing so in a way that, uh, as I said earlier, doesn't create greater risk around 
uh, around the well. And just to follow on the question about Bill Clinton, not only is he involved today in discussions about job creation in the private sector, but also um, he, he will be going out there on the campaign trail quite heavily, assisting in, in with the uh, upcoming midterm election. It, has he sort of become a, a key lifeline for the administration? Well, Dan, uh, I think uh, Bill Clinton has probably been campaigning longer than uh, I've been working uh, in politics and you've been reporting. Uh, I think it would be crazy not to have uh, a former, a very popular former president out, uh, uh, out campaigning as he has uh, in virtually every election cycle uh, that I can remember in the last, uh, well, since 1992, so almost 20 years. One final question on this controversial mosque near Ground Zero. Um, has the White House following that? Any, any comments? I, 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 I don't have any. How do you respond to uh, critics on the Hill, Republican critics on the Hill, who say that Bill Clinton's in this meeting because relations are so bad between the president and business? I think I answered business. that. Ago. I think I answered that. Ago. The mediator. No, they say that he actually needs. No, no, I, I know. I, I think I, I, the, the reason that Bill Clinton is in the meeting is one of the ideas that is being discussed in the meeting is an idea that they came up with at the Clinton Global Initiative. Right. I heard. I know that. The, but, well, but I'm asking. It. How do you respond to people who say that's not the real reason? The real reason I, is I the relations did. are so bad yeah, I, that he I, needs a mediator in there. Well, Bill Clinton I, is the guy who can I, I perform that. Question. Do you think the president's relations with business are as good as Bill Clinton's relations with the business community? Uh, yes. You do, based on? Uh, based on the fact that I think we have, uh, uh, we have done a lot to improve the business climate in this country, as evident today by uh, the profit and earnings uh, results that are being released. On the oil spill, has the, is the president spending much time on that now? What is uh, he doing? The, the, the president receives uh, uh, updates throughout the day and uh, I believe is going to speak at 3.30 with uh, the scientific team down in Houston. And uh, finally, on uh, your comments on this week on losing the House, has, have you had conversations with the president about that? <laughs> has he spoken to you? Has anybody else in the White House spoken to you with either either pleased or displeased with what you said? No. Have you been contacted by anybody on the Hill, any Democratic members or staffers, either pleased or displeased? I have uh, not heard so from any Democratic members. So it's been total radio silence on the, and telephone silence on the, and I, email silence on the entire topic. I, I have not talked to any members on Capitol Hill. Or emailed or, or had any conversations with anybody about the no. whole thing? No. Why do you think there's a disconnect with what we're hearing from the Chamber of Commerce about business and the relationship with business in this White House? Uh, what do you make of this I think it's disconnect? Because you sat there and you made the case about profits and tax cuts and this or that, but they're not hearing it. What do you make of it? <laughs> Chip, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Chuck, I, I don't... Uh, uh, I think if you looked at the last, uh, well, I don't know, go back 10 elections, uh, I think the Chamber of Commerce has tended to spend most of their money uh, supporting Republican candidates. You don't believe they're speaking for business? Uh, yeah, fairly speaking for business? I, I, I don't doubt that there are members of the Chamber of Commerce that share their views. Uh, do I think that they monolithically speak for business? No. Well, one of the criticisms that you hear from Any more CEOs, than the FIB or but, if you go to, or, but I was just saying, a business roundtable with the president does seem to have a better relationship. Mm -hmm. Sort of personal relationship with those folks. Their critique is uncertainty. That they're not sure how much health care is going to cost. They're still waiting to figure out what this energy well, bill is going to do. Chuck, and well, so what well, do you, let's it, go back is that to, a fair critique from them? Well, let's go back to let's go back to early April, right? When there was this before what happened in, in Greece and Spain happened. Uh, and right after health care. Well, you would you would acknowledge that the viewpoint before Greece and Spain happened was they were uh, more excited about mm -hmm. the coming economic recovery, right? That was that was seems to be right. right. So that was after healthcare. So it's not it's not as if healthcare happened between April and okay. But energy has been another uh, has been another talking point in this uncertainty. This issue of uncertainty, and it's, again, and it's an explanation of why they're keeping money, why they're not spending their I, I capital. I think, again, it, 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 I got a minor in economics, which means I took five classes. Two. Uh, okay. Well, I, I think collectively our seven classes 
might come to the reasoned deduction that business spending at a time in which the economy is worse than it has been since 19, the late 1920s might denote that business spending is bad. But there still seems to be this disconnect, at least between the rhetoric, between the relationship that you believe you have with the business community and the relationship the business community seems to Again, be upset I, about. And I, I, and I think probably somewhere in between there is politics. Uh, again, I don't, you know, I, I mean, do I think the Chamber of Commerce is going to spend tens of millions of dollars uh, trying to elect a series of candidates that are different than the candidates that the president's going to try to elect? Yes. Uh, but I think that was true in 2008, in 2006, in 2004, in 2002, in 2000, in 1998, in 1996, in 1994, in 1992 when Bill Clinton was there. That's, I, I, What's the percentage of money that the Chamber of Commerce donates to Republican candidates on each election cycle? I don't know the number, but my guess, what would, you, would you hazard a guess that's above 80%? I would like to check the numbers, but I, it's clearly a majority of Republicans. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll put my 20 down on above 80. Senator Luger today is calling, wants more, he, he's calling it more clarity on, on this timeline and of Afghanistan. First of all, did Senator Luger contact the president privately about about the concerns he was going to raise publicly before? He you know, raised I, I don't. I will say Senator Luger and Senator Kerry were here, I think, yesterday to meet with the vice president uh, on uh, the progress that the Foreign Relations Committee and the Senate are making on START. I do not know if the president uh, stopped by that. So you don't know if he's no. been. Were you? Was somebody in the White House aware that Senator Luger was going to make these comments? I, I can check with NSC. And going back to your comments on Sunday. Would you have uttered them differently, knowing, is there anything you would change about what you would say, considering the criticism well, that's being posted? I, I might ask you all to read the comments before you do your stories. I, do you I might, still stand, not just stand by them, but you wouldn't word things any differently? Uh, I, 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 again, I think what I said was what I hear you do from 9 to 10 most mornings uh, on MSNBC. Um, I don't think I said anything that was, um, Politically shocking. It's a little um, on the pieces of them when you say it. Well, I don't know why I would say something about Chuck like that with him in the room, but. Um, uh, but if it would make the folks in the in the house feel better, sure. would you have worded things a little bit differently? Uh, of course. Robert, do you think Jonathan. you've handed Republicans an issue? No. John. What has the president been doing in the last 48, 72 hours to ensure passage of the FinRag by the financial regulation? Well, I think in the last 24 hours, uh, well, I don't know when the last of the, I don't know what, I don't know what, what, how many hours has been since Senator Nelson, I think, made it likely to be 61 votes in favor of, um, uh, of, uh, of that bill passing. Uh, Jonathan, Secretary Geithner, uh, Director Summers, Christy Romer, the entire economic team have been, uh, working on this issue since, uh, well, since we came into office uh, and uh, spent a lot of time walking people through the legislation. And I think clearly uh, a piece of legislation that, you know, in, uh, in January or February were, uh, was unclear whether you could cobble together the support to pass is not only going to pass with more than 60 votes, but it's going to institute rules in the road that we haven't seen uh, for decades, and we'll put consumers in charge of uh, their finances in a way that uh, they haven't been in a long time. So you you think you think you've got this in the bag? So what are you planning in uh, on uh, in terms of a signing ceremony and when? Uh, well, uh, let me. Uh, I think the Senate is going to take this bill up tomorrow, uh, and at the you know we'll uh, we'll sign the bill at, at a at, at what point it comes down uh, here. Uh, I can assure you that the president will uh, will make an issue of passing what is uh, what is a significant part of uh, our economic recovery, and that is putting in place rules that do not allow the type of activities to happen uh, going forward that happened just a little under two years ago. Uh, it is important. Uh, we fought for, we included, and we're going to get a strong consumer office. Um, 
and uh, I think there are a whole host of provisions uh, that uh, that this administration and those that support the bill, Democrats and Republicans, can be proud. And one more thing: does, does the president plan to attend Chelsea Clinton wedding? Not that I'm aware of. Robert, can you preview the speech in Michigan tomorrow? Will it be another clean energy economy speech? Well, Mark, a lot of what I talked about yesterday, uh, we are going to, we will, the president will talk about. Obviously, we're going to break ground on the ninth of nine advanced battery uh, manufacturers. These nine, these are nine plants that didn't exist before the Recovery Act. Through the Recovery Act, uh, public investment spurred greater private investment. Um, this is the plant that will, when it's uh, constructed, produce the batteries for Chevy's Volt that I believe Chevy has announced they'll produce basically 50,000 of these cars a year. Just yesterday afternoon, Ford announced that next year they will offer uh, the Ford Focus in an electric car. Uh, and Ford will purchase its batteries from this plant uh, instead of purchasing them from overseas. Our vehicle capacity, our battery capacity will go from 2% of the world's supply to 40% as a result of, of these facilities and create uh, uh, manufacturing jobs in places like Michigan that, uh, that uh, desperately need help. Uh, and Mark, I think it is safe to say that the president will remind uh, voters in Michigan and throughout the country that these are, uh, uh, and this is a, a good thing, Chuck, in, 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 when you're talking about business. These are businesses that are expanding and being created as a result of the tough votes that were taken on the Recovery Act, right? So you'll have a, you'll have a roll call of who thought this was a good idea and who thought this was a bad idea. And to mix the politics questions that I've gotten before, this is the kind of debate that we'll have in November, whether you're for creating the clean energy jobs of the future or not. Why shouldn't projects like this be funded all by the private sector? Why should government funds get involved? Well, again, government funds help spur private investment, right, uh, as happens uh, in a number of projects, Mark. But uh, the question is, are we going to attract these industries to this country, or are we going to import these batteries? Are we going to build wind turbines here, or are we going to import them from uh, overseas? Are we going to build solar panels here, or are we going to get them from China? Um, are we going to create those jobs here in America, in places like Holland, Michigan, uh, and others, uh, or are we going to create them overseas? And I think what you hear the President discuss tomorrow is, these are batteries that are made in America, uh, built by Americans that create jobs right here. Rod. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, up, back to Warren Buffett. Uh, you said the meeting was lengthy. About how long did it last? Uh, I will everything? get the exact timing of the, uh, of the hour meeting. or 30 uh, I, minutes. I, I, I don't have it off the top okay. of my head. And what did the president want to know from Mr. Buffett? Well, uh, look, you, you said they talked about a, a yeah, wide look, range of things. Can they, you name uh, some? Uh, everything under the economic sky. Uh, I, interest rates? Uh, I, I don't know if they talk specifically you, about interest okay. rates. All right. Budget deficits? Uh, I, it, again, I think they talked about, I, I was not in the meeting uh, uh, with Mr. Buffett, but uh, um, how to continue to create jobs in this country, how to keep our uh, economy moving forward. Uh, I am sure they talked about uh, uh, budgets, regulation, taxes, uh, all of those topics. Larry Summers in the room? Uh, I don't know if Larry was in there or not, if it was just a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, or what was it? Just I, I think uh, the picture that we released was just with the president. Yeah. Okay, and one other question. There's a, uh, the president and vice president had a lunch with senators today. Uh, who what was uh, on the agenda? How many? We have, I believe it was uh, five senators. I'm doing this off the top of my head, so let's see how good I am. Uh, I believe they were all from the 06 class. Um, Klobuchar, White House, Brown. Oh yes, uh, Senator Casey and Senator McCaskill. Uh, the president has had uh, senators over here, uh, met with committee chairs uh, fairly regularly when taking office, and this is just a continuation of that. There wasn't any particular agenda. No.
Major. Robert, uh, do you believe the chamber is willfully distorting either the administration's record or its desires in its dealings with the business community? I can't speak to their motives, Major. I, I don't. I don't think what they're saying is accurate. And and do you attribute that because of politics, the political season? Uh, again, I think they come at this from a different political perspective. Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to give you a chance to talk uh, from the podium about a couple of things. The administration's removal. Uh, references to Islamic radicalism and the President's comments last night on South African television about al-Shabaab and the attack in Uganda. First of all, the, the, the reason the, the administration thinks it's a good idea to clarify its language about those whom we're encountering in the, the terrorist community and removing references to Islamic radicalism. Uh, I, I'm happy to look at uh, some of what you're talking about, but I you're not familiar with what I'm talking about? Not generally, no. I, I'm familiar with the President's interview last night. I'm, 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 well, I, I'm, again, I'm happy to look at what he was trying to pull. Yeah. I mean, I think, look, the President, uh, the, the, the President discussed the, what had tragically happened in Uganda. But understanding that, uh, and we've seen this on a number of occasions, that uh, Al Qaeda is. Uh, is preying on Africans um, just as the continent and the country of South Africa demonstrated for the world um, what it had done in the World Cup. Uh, terrorists that seek to not build but destroy uh, killed innocent men, women, and children, uh, killed an American. Uh, and uh, it's an important message to have in the continent of Africa that uh, Al-Qaeda and its affiliates uh, do not value the lives uh, of those in Africa, nor do they value the lives of, uh, of those they seek to innocently, the innocents that they seek to kill. Does the President agree with other officials who identify that as a racist uh, I, again, I, I think approach to? I think they are, uh, uh, I think they have taken steps to uh, prey on, uh, on Africans and they do not value uh, the continent or, or its people. And for the third time, do you have an evaluation of the Administration of Justice's point of view on sanctuary cities and uh, I, whether I, or not? I think that, uh, I, uh, I, we gave that I think yesterday and I'd be happy to get that too. Describe it here? Uh, I, I don't have it with me, but I'm happy to, to get what we gave to them. Afghanistan? Uh, let me get around. Yeah. How many jobs uh, do, do you estimate are going to be created at the plant he's visiting tomorrow? Uh, I, I don't know how many. Uh, let me get the number because I'm sure there's there's both a construction job. There's also number of jobs that we expect to be uh, of of uh, of those that will manufacture the batteries. Obviously, um, the announcement yesterday by Ford increases the uh, likely production capabilities uh, in Holland. Um, as they're producing now not just batteries for uh, the Chevy Volt, but also the Ford Focus. Um, and when did he, this is what, the second or third battery event he's done? I think so, yeah. And I know Biden's, when did batteries become such a, a subject of interest for him? Did he get some battery demonstration early on? Can you talk well, a little bit well, about no, this no, 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 look, I, I think if, I mean, if you charge out of A good suggestion, but I won't repeat that line. Um, uh, look, I, if we're going to create, if we're going to manufacture the cars uh, that people are going to drive, if we're going to make progress on, uh, on energy and pollution, um, it's going to be through uh, cars like the Volt or the Focus that don't run on oil or gas, but instead run on uh, a charge of electricity. They get 100 miles per charge. Uh, these are the, again. These are the type of cars that we're going to drive and that we're going to manufacture. And the question is, are we going to are we going to manufacture them here? We're going to manufacture them somewhere else. In order to have them, I mean, the, the biggest <coughs> technological leap that had to happen in this was, um, how do you create a battery that's small enough to fit in a car that charges for uh, for a longer period of time that enables somebody to go uh, more than just a few miles without either having to charge it or using a gas electric hybrid engine um, and uses electricity at certain points but gas at others. Uh, these are the types of jobs that, uh, these are the new jobs of the future that we, again, we're either going to 
manufacture the technology and create those jobs here, we're going to import that technology. Right, that's the policy, but is it fair to say that he's taken a personal interest in this one? I mean, it's a large number of events for him to do about one piece of technology. Well, again, I think this also is, it, it also, it demonstrates the, um, uh, it demonstrates the investments that will, that were because of, and will pay dividends because of, uh, the Recovery Act. These, these, these are not, this is not a plant that is being built without uh, that, uh, those investments, and those investments are important. I will mention, as we talk about autos, you know, for instance, we're talking about the business climate, you know, one of the things that Carol Browner and others here have spent an, an awful lot of time working on is how to take regulations and rules like corporate average fuel economy, uh, greenhouse gases and give business the certainty to manufacture not one car in California, a different car in the Midwest, a different car in the Northeast with different emissions and fuel standards, but instead to provide uniformity and certainty across all vehicles. Um, that had been talked about for 30 years in Washington and for 30 years corporate average fuel economy didn't rise. Uh, that changed. Uh, very early on, the president signed an increase in corporate average fuel economy that, uh, and certainty in emissions rules across the fleet. We expanded that to work trucks just a few months ago for the first time ever. So I think that would be certainly one good example of certainty, regulation, investment, uh, and progress um, that this administration worked very closely with uh, auto manufacturers on. Peter. Can I follow up on that? Yeah. You, since you're talking about Warren Buffett today and also uh, electric cars, Warren Buffett uh, has actually chosen not to invest in these American electric car makers, but he is the biggest shareholder in the Chinese electric car company, EYD. Why is it that he has? so much more confidence in the Chinese manufacturer of electric cars or not these companies that you're talking I don't, about. I, 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 Can you speculate? I, I, don't, I don't want to be Warren Buffett's <laughs> spokesperson, though. I bet that's a good gig. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, I don't. Uh, but I, I will say this. We, again, the, the, the plants that manufacture the batteries for these types of cars did not exist, did not exist only a few years ago, okay? So I don't know. I, I look. I don't know well, what Warren. I don't know what to invest. Why? I, again, I, I don't know what Warren Buffett's investment strategy. Trust me, if I knew that, I would. Uh, shall we say, be in a better place? Um, uh, but I will say this. Uh, this I think goes somewhat perfectly to the question that I posed earlier, and that is: Are we going to build? The, where are we going to build these? Right? Are we going to build these in China? Are we going to build these overseas? Are we going to build these? Um, et cetera, we're going to build solar panels in China, we're going to build wind turbines in Europe, or we're going to do them here. Uh, the president and many in Congress decided that we're going to do them here. We're going to build these plants, you know, construct these plants in America, we're going to build these products in America, and we're going to employ Americans. And I think that's, uh, that's a strong economic record. Mark? Yeah, Robert, uh, this weekend's trip to Far yes. Harbor by the First Family, why'd they choose it, that area? What are they planning to do up there? The, uh, I think the first family enjoyed immensely the trip out west last year uh, where um, going to a couple of different national parks. Um, I remember going on the trip and it, 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 you, you, you're obviously struck by the beauty of our national park system. Uh, this builds off of that uh, uh, in Maine and uh, we'll have a, a longer itinerary uh, shortly. Rough idea of what kinds of things they're hoping well, to do out there, where they're uh, staying. I think you'll see hiking. I think you'll see uh, them spend a lot of time outside. Did anybody, maybe Senator Collins or Snow, encourage them to go there? Uh, I, I would hope that uh, that was probably the case. I know he talked to both of them uh, to let them know he would be coming. All right. Yesterday, the Senate confirmed President Obama's 23rd judge, and by this point in the Bush administration, there have been 72 confirmed. Right. Do you think this White House cares less about it than, than Bush did? <laughs> well, I, I, uh, let me tell you, if it was just a matter of nominating the judges, um, that would be uh, an easier way to do this. There are 21 judges that have passed committee that are pending confirmation. 13 of those passed the committee unanimously. 
Um, do I think that the Senate uh, is processing those nominations as quickly as they were? No. Uh, are they clearing those nominations cleared through the committee as quickly as they should? No. Um, we have, uh, I, I think, I'll go back and check the, the numbers of nominees that each president has sent up. But I think if you look at, uh, th this goes back to the nominations discussions that we've had in this room over the course of the past week. Uh, there, there are those in the Senate that uh, have decided on the Republican side that they're just not going to process uh, these nominees as fast as they did uh, seven or eight years ago. If the White House were putting less pressure, though, on things like financial regulation, unemployment extension, et cetera, well, do you think there would be more room to push right, judges? I don't think if, if somebody passes the Judiciary Committee unanimously, right, let's safe to assume that those that are most, have been selected by each party to examine judicial nominees as part of the Judiciary Committee most closely, if 13 of those are not, have, don't have objections to by any sitting member of that Judiciary Committee, but haven't been acted on. Uh, I don't think this is because we're doing financial reform. I don't think this is because we're doing the Recovery Act. I think there's a strategy by those not to process those judges. Um, and they, they certainly should because uh, obviously they're important appointments and uh, that's what they're there to do. Uh, yeah. Christy. Robert, how concerned is the President about the statements by the Turkish Foreign Minister about potentially cutting off relations with Israel over the artillery? Well, uh, look, I, I won't get farther, much farther than some of the readouts that we've done. Uh, obviously, I will say that uh, President Obama and uh, has talked to, uh, uh, talked to the Turkish government a lot over the uh, past many weeks, most recently at the G20. Um, in, in order to uh, continue to make progress, not only on our relationship, but uh, uh, on their relationship throughout the world. Is there something other than an apology from Israel that would ease relations between the two countries? Right. Uh, that's a good question you should pose to the Israeli government. Okay. I, don't, I don't want to speak for either the Turkish or the Israeli government. Could you tell me if the U.S. government will in some way get involved in talks between the two? Uh, let me check on that. Margaret. Thank you. Um, Robert, do you believe that Americans associate the Clinton era, the Clinton presidency, with a time of more economic bounty or better economic opportunity for America? And aside from all the chamber questions, et cetera, does the administration want to send a signal to Americans that you're tapping President Clinton's expertise, people like Jack Lew, in an effort to bring some of that back? Or do you do you think Was that the that's economy a better in 1997 than it is right now? Yes. Um, uh, or in 1998 or uh, in 1999. Uh, yes. Uh, but we, uh, I don't have my little chart today. Uh, but, yesterday. right, but the, the depth of what we've, not to minimize, the depth of what we faced in 1991 and 1992 um, wasn't as deep by a factor of probably two or three than what we're facing right now. Um, that is to say that, um, look, whether it's Jack Lew, whether it's Bill Clinton, whether it's others, uh, they're obviously those with a great amount of expertise uh, in economics and in economic policy. Um, our, our hope is to uh, fuel economic growth and build the types of uh, companies and plants and jobs that we're going to highlight tomorrow. Um, obviously, at the end of that eight years, we know that uh, there was a dot-com bubble that um, uh, that uh, hurt our economy. Uh, what the, you've heard the president talk an awful lot about is creating a foundation for economic growth that does not depend on uh, bubble and bust economies. Uh, that is going to take a long time to do, uh, but I think tomorrow is a pretty good example of uh, what the president hopes to see in the future. Just to clarify quickly, I know people don't like to hear bad news in an election year, but 
Isn't what you're saying that even with some of the best experts from some of the flushest times in recent memory, just that alone can't instantly bring things back, that no matter who's in place, it's going to be well, a Well, Margaret, I, I don't want to leave anybody with the impression that we thought hiring a certain number of people uh, would necessarily bring back the economy of, look, obviously you're talking about somewhat different circumstances. You're talking about fundamentally a different economy. This was not a, um, a personnel alone does not determine, um, ask the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, if, uh, if personnel alone uh, or the, you know, ask anybody. Uh, they're, they're, every team except the Lakers put together a team to win the NBA title and only one did. So uh, I don't want to leave anybody with the impression or the illusion that hiring a certain number of uh, economic advisors uh, with a certain number of ideas is in and of itself going to, again, there were some real structural problems with, uh, the, with the economy that we saw in, uh, in the late fall in 2008 that we're having to deal with. Uh, problems, quite frankly, that built up over uh, a number of years, not something that just happened overnight. Uh, that hole is going to take a long time to fill in, and that's what we're... Uh, that's what we're working through. Thanks, Robert. Yes. Given some of the rhetoric and some of the votes on the Hill over the supplemental and also some of the discussions that he had on the sidelines of the G20 with uh, British PM and others, is the President getting concerned that uh, patience with the Afghanistan policy is wearing thin, either among allies or among even Democrats on the Hill? No, I mean, look, I, I think it's important to understand that, um, Richard, we've been there for almost 10 years. But let's be honest and say that the resources that are there now have not been there for 10 years, okay? This was not the central front in the war on terror. This was, uh, this was forgotten, uh, even as commanders over there asked for more. Uh, the president came in uh, and approved 17,000 additional troops for election security. Uh, as a part of the review last fall, dedicated an additional number of troops uh, that are on pace to uh, get into the country by the end of uh, by the end of the summer. Just as I might add, we are getting our combat troops out of Iraq. Um, but the president believed that dedicating these new resources, um, a plan developed. Uh, with uh, the Pentagon and others in the Situation Room uh, over the course of last fall and last winter uh, was the right strategy to pursue. In December, there will be a White House-led review on where we are. Uh, we will we'll evaluate. At that point, we will have had a significant increase in those resources uh, in the country, and, and we'll have a chance to evaluate it. But I have said and others have said throughout this process, we are not going to be in Afghanistan forever. We can't. Um, and, uh, but I, I think the President believes and, and those in the Situation Room believe that this was the right strategy, uh, finally married up with the right number of resources uh, and the dedication of, uh, of our brave men and women, um, uh, and we're giving that a chance to work. And really the question is, is, given all of that, is he concerned that allies on the Hill, allies overseas, don't see things the same way, don't have the same degree of patience? Well, look, again, I, I think it is understandable that people are frustrated. We, have, we are in Afghanistan longer than we have ever been in any other place uh, in a time of war. Um, that creates frustration, and that's understandable. That's why the President decided that instead of perpetuating our frustration, we should dedicate the resources necessary. Um, we have increased our contribution from, uh, from uh, NATO countries, and uh, that has been important uh, in our efforts. Again, we will evaluate where we are in December um, and, uh, uh, and make, uh, make, uh, make that evaluation. Bill. Robert, at today's meeting on retrofitting buildings with uh, President Clinton and the business leaders, were there any labor union presidents there? Uh, I don't believe there were. Uh, I, let me get the list of. It's in my stack here somewhere. Did I bring it out? <laughs> uh, 
No, uh, the CEOs of Honeywell Bank of America, uh, co-founder of Centerbridge Partners, uh, CEO of Hannon Armstrong, and the executive vice president of Amerisco, as well as Bill Clinton. Well, at least the sheet metal workers union, the laborers union, among other unions, are involved in, in the workers who are doing these jobs. Wouldn't it make sense to have them present? Well, we're talking I, about. I, I, I do. The president has, uh, and the economic team have a number of discussions, uh, and I know they've spoken with, uh, as we have developed uh, Homestar, our program that's gone through uh, the committee process to uh, increase our retrofitting for homes, and obviously there's a dedication to uh, retrofitting in the Recovery Act that uh, has included the, um, the advice of many. I, if, um, you know, I, I watch the schedule every day. I see often meetings with the president having lunch with business leaders. Um, you may not know now, but could you tell us the last time the president has sat down with a group of labor leaders, either in the Oval Office or over lunch, labor leaders? Uh, we had, uh, uh, I think he saw Andy Stern, uh, I get the date, uh, and uh, certainly either in January or February, I forget when. Uh, I. I think they were, uh, I think every major union was represented inside the Roosevelt. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Robert, last week a federal court in Boston determined that part of the Defensive Marriage Act is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. so the president has several times called this law discriminatory. Uh, this is, is the president's support of that. Uh, let me, uh, I'll point you to the Department of Justice uh, uh, on that. Thanks, guys.